And when the prayer finally gets to the wish list part, they're pretty modest requests. Enough for the day. Forgiveness contingent on us forgiving all those who have hurt us. And protection from judgment or temptation. There are no sports cars. There are no color TVs. There's no the good life. Rather, it's a prayer for a rather simple life where God provides all that we need and the world is reshaped to be the sort of place that God wishes it to be. Jesus then goes on to encourage us to be persistent in our prayer, saying that if we know how to give good gifts to our own children, how much more God can be counted on to give good gifts to us. But if God is the parent, we are the children. Well, doesn't that presume that God is the one who gets to decide what is best for us? Now, I've known the occasional parents who seem to think that their job is to let the children decide what's best, and, and they try to make them happy, to give them whatever they want. Uh, such parents are, are usually perpetually frustrated with the impossibility of this task. Their children usually make everyone around them miserable, and the children themselves are often unhappy and frustrated to boot. You know, it turns out that children rarely know what will actually make them happy. They rarely can perceive what is actually best for them, and you know, we adults are only marginally better at this. We're forever engaging in self-destructive behavior on the notion that it'll somehow make us happy. And yet, I still make judgments about God based on how well God responds to what I want, on what I think is best for me, on whether or not God responds in the manner that I would like. I saw an article the other day that suggested that when the disciples in, in our passage this morning asked Jesus to teach them to pray, that they weren't actually looking for another new prayer technique or prayer pose. That what motivated the disciples' request was them seeing the intimacy, the closeness that Jesus had with God. And they were asking, in essence, Lord, teach us how to love and trust the Father like you do, that our own prayer lives would increase in fullness and in honesty. You know, we, we church people are a funny sort. We're drawn to God. We, we genuinely feel a pull to connect with God. But very often, we seem frightened of getting too close. We want to enlist God in our lives and in our causes, but we resist turning our lives over to God. We resist the very things that the disciples saw in Jesus and so wanted for themselves. And often churches have abetted this problem, failing to demonstrate a faith that would prompt anyone to say, wow, look at the intimacy with, that they have with God. Teach us to love God and trust God like you do. Yeah, I love the church. But from time to time, I think the church might do well to stop worrying about doctrines, and rules, worship styles, and politics, and get back to Jesus. To gaze lovingly and longingly on the person of Jesus. What if we set aside all our notions about what faith is and what church is? What if we let go of all our expectations and our images of God and simply gazed on the face of God in this first century Palestinian Jew? 
What if we dwell there long enough that like those first disciples, we started to long for the same sort of trust, intimacy with God that Jesus had? Might we then be able to say with those disciples, Oh Lord, teach us to love and to trust the Father as You do, that our prayer lives might grow in fullness and honesty, that Your presence and Your love might become so palpably present here that others would look and long to become more like us. Make it so, Lord. Make it so.